What's up guys, my name is Dave Cole Giovanni. I'm the owner to Super Inspections. This is the super show where I get to interview the most important people in real estate today with me, Lou Cardillo. Thanks man. It's a pleasure. How's everything going? It's doing great. It's doing great. So, I, I actually Googled it this morning. Are we still in a <laughs> pandemic? I, uh, had to, I had to Google and, appa and apparently we're still in a pandemic. We are apparently in, still in a pandemic. And so, the thing is, as many negative things that came apart, what is the most can you comment on some positive things that you found that a pandemic, um, you know, some positive things that the pandemic did for real estate? Um, I mean, it, it definitely increased um, activity, sales volume, house prices. I mean, agents that, you know, I own Keller Williams franchises, so I watch numbers of not just my team and my, um, my, my agents on my team, but my, my whole company in general and agents who four years ago were making barely no income or low five figures are started breaking the six figure mark or ones that were making a good six figures hit seven. Uh, you know, you just see that just that no matter where you were on the spectrum, whether you were a brand new agent or uh, very seasoned, people were making money. Wow. And they still are, I mean, they still are. We still don't have enough inventory. We, um, we're, agents are mostly order takers, uh, and just, you gotta fight to get the deal done. Yeah. You know, we need more inventory. Yeah, is there anything, you know, if we could predict another pandemic in say 10 years from now, would, would you handle your real estate dealings differently knowing what you went through more recently? I mean, is there a different way to handle how you enter into a recession or a pandemic as far as buying, well, I buying think some. with this one, we were really unprepared for, right? So when the first happened, we didn't know what was going to come from it. So we were, I was looking at like, okay, you know, are we shutting offices? Are we are we squeezing down square footage? Are we reducing costs um, to get through it? We obviously did get did get some uh, governmental help, which, which helped out my my agent base as well. Um, but uh, what I would do differently, like like now, I have in this office alone, I have almost eight thousand square feet. Um, and everything went to Zoom uh, during the pandemic. We weren't even allowed to use our offices. But now, coming back out of it, I'm trying to figure out how do we get people back in the office. Yeah. So we're doing a lot more training. We're doing a lot more um, uh, in-person meetings. And it's working to get them back in there. But we used to have agents who have learned to work mostly on the road or, <clears throat> excuse me, work from home. They don't really come in for a desk anymore. So we're repurposing our space. We're building actually a, uh, an academy for agents where if they want to be part of the academy, we're going to offer a bunch of services and they have to, as part of the program, we have this whole space of like 2,000 square feet that's just for those academy agents. Because, you know, the, the good side was the agents that were making money before through the pandemic. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the bad side was the agents that never made money in real estate or made very little money, they think now real estate's easy. Yeah. So we're saying, okay, when we come out of the pandemic and things start slowing down, they're going to be like, okay, now what? So we want to help that transition. We're building an academy for those agents to keep the momentum going. Yeah. Have you found that, um, you know, realtor interest or people wanting to become a realtor has yes. increased during the pandemic? Yes, 100%. Wow. No matter where you are, uh, no matter what you do, everyone's talking real estate somehow, some way. Yeah. And uh, yes, it has. I mean, just even the... HGTV shows and stuff like that where they think it's all like million dollar listing and all that. Oh, I want to be that guy. Yeah, that's all BS. I mean, that's not the that's not the way the world works. Yeah. Um, but most people were coming in before the pandemic because of those TV shows. Now that combined with the pandemic, everyone thinks you make a million dollars, which yeah. you can in real estate. But yeah. you know, you still gotta have people need to know you, like you, trust you. That's the base of real estate. They know you, they like you, and they trust you. You'll make money. All right. Cool. And so. What are some of the um, the advantages of your realtors working in this office? What 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 are they getting here that they wouldn't find elsewhere? Um, so at Keller Williams in general, um, outside of just as always, I mean we're a training, coaching, and development company. Really? Yeah. So really behind the scenes, we are coaching, training, developing agents to their their highest level possible and helping them find their path in real estate. Um, I'm, you know, if you want to work with buyers, you want to work with sellers, you want to be on a team, you want to build your own team. So there's a whole bunch of, like we offer a, a buffet of services to agents. Yeah. So like a buffet, if you go to the buffet to eat, you go up the first time, you probably take a lot of stuff just to eat it, you know, to try everything. 
but then eventually within a little bit of time you find your path so the next time you go up to the buffet you probably don't take as much stuff and you pick and choose we kind of have agents help find their path that way yeah that's Keller Williams in general myself um, because I am still an active owner in the real estate business I don't personally go on listing appointments or work with buyers anymore personally but I oversee my team who does that for me. So I have buyer's agents and uh, listing agents that do those appointments for me, but I still oversee, cast a vision, provide the capital, provide the accountability for the team. So my whether you're on my team or in one of my Keller offices, um, I really have a high pulse on the market. Yeah. So agents get the benefit of having someone um, like myself in that role helping them. And also I have great leaders who I catch my vision through them and it just trickles down. So I think working here in general over another office or even another, another Keller Williams office, we provide more value because I know what agents go through on a daily basis. I know the roller coasters, the bumps and the bruises, you know, the deal academy, something that I came up with um, to help agents come out of the pandemic. Like I kind of see where it's going and I just, I constantly move and create the uh, better systems, tools uh, and processes for them. Wow. So your number one advice for a new realtor getting into this business what is it number one advice um one thing i could say is that uh, and i've always kind of said this from day one just make sure you have enough funds in the bank make sure you're doing this for the right reason and make sure you have i want to say at least six months worth of funding in the bank to carry yourself um, or at least a year you know i don't think it'll take that long if you do the right activities on a daily basis which is getting people to know you like you trust you um, and that's you know making phone calls, meeting people belly to belly, that's into that market, whatever it is that you want to do to get in front of people. Yeah. But make sure you have enough money in the bank to, uh, to sustain yourself because the worst thing I see with agents is they always have too much month at the end of their money. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, got it? So they have too yeah. much month at the end of their money and I'd, then I'd they- I'd be a great realtor. What's that? <laughs> <Not scared. laughs> a great realtor. Oh, so then they're always worried about the next month's um, bills and when you're worried, then you get what's called commission breath. And then when you have commission breath, it's kind of just like, you're just fighting no matter what, you're just trying to make a deal. And people feel that. Whether yeah. it's you taking a listing, whether it's you working with a buyer, they feel that you're not there for their needs and you're there for yourself. You're not gonna make them, you're not gonna make a deal. So come in well capitalized. And I try to tell agents, um, even um, I have Mark who runs my Keller Williams always, I, I teach, I tell agents, you need to have a year's worth of money in the bank before you get into real estate. Scare them away. Yeah. Scare them away. Wow. Don't tell them, oh yeah, you're going to make money right They might. I mean, with our systems and tools, we'll get them productive within nine days or less. We know we can do it, but we're not going to, we're going to like um, under promise and over deliver, right? But we don't want you here like, oh, I got the reason I'm getting into real estate is I got to pay, pay my bills right away. So the younger people, it's easier with because some of them are still living at home. They don't have a lot of bills. They don't have all these cars. But when you have somebody's later on life when they have college payments they have big bills whatever it is you know you got to tell them hey um just make sure that you're well capitalized wow you know? all right and so now your number one advice for um someone looking to sell their home for top dollar number one advice for someone looking for top dollars you know today. List with us <laughs> what else advice would I give? Them? Go to the That's, professional in the market. Go yeah. to the guy who knows what's going on. Okay. Um, I would say for top dollar, um, the one thing that I don't ever really recommend people doing is some agents recommend this. I don't know why. They recommend they start redoing things in their house, like redo the bathroom, redo the kitchen, redo this. The, the, the money you're going to put into your house, you're never going to get it back, right? Yeah. But what we do recommend is like if you have shag carpet or like holes in your walls, like you know, paint the place. Like there's certain things when we come into your house, we'll tell you things, these things need to be done, but we're not going to tell you to uh, go redo a bathroom. Because if your house is from like the seventies and your kitchen is, and you're going to redo the kitchen and they're going to come and go, Ooh, wow. Look at that kitchen. Ooh, ah, but they go into your bathrooms and they're those old green tile with the black borders and that they're going to think about, Oh, well now I got to have the kitchens match the bathroom. So wow. just, just clean it up as much as you can. And we consult people not to put as much money into their houses as they think they do. Yeah. And HGTV and those shows try to tell you to go redo this. If you put 10,000, you'll get 15,000 back. Like some instances, yes, but just do not touch your house until you have us in there or a realtor in there yeah. to walk you through that process. 
Don't call me afterwards like, hey, we just did all these improvements and now I'm calling you. Call us before, the minute you think about something is when you call and then we'll walk you through that, that process. What I want to say about the home inspection industry is that it, it's actually relatively new to New York State. If you can believe it, the home inspection license didn't come out until 2005. Actually, right. December 31st, 2005. We'll call it 2006. You know, the licensing, right. The licensing of right. the home inspection. How has the home inspection, and, and I'm sure you've seen it through the oh, course of this it. time, it's, it's about 17 years old, the licensing in New York State. How has the home inspection industry and just how home inspectors work, how has that changed in the last, say, 16, 17 years? Well, what I've seen from, because I got licensed in 98, right? So what did we say, 05? So I really was only licensed like seven years before that. But in that short little stint of time, um, I have seen that anybody before with a, with a tool belt and a, and a ruler and a whatever, yeah. thought they were a home inspector. And anybody was a home inspector back then. Yeah. I've seen the change over the times to people who were being um, held accountable to their inspection reports and whatever the law says. So I've seen it go from just anybody doing a part time to actually becoming a business. I've seen a lot more inspection reporting companies like apps and stuff that you guys use now. Like I've seen that get better. Um, um, I think also back then, what I do see changing now as well is that most inspectors back then used to sell on the fear of stuff to create value in what you were paying, what they were getting paid by the buyer. Yeah. Basically saying like, oh, well, look, I found this thing. And they make a big thing out of it. And then the, the buyer goes, oh my God, thank God, thank God we hired the inspector. You're worth your $700,000, whatever it was. Now it's more of a consultative approach. Like, hey, just want to alert you to this. This is what it is. This is how to mitigate that or, or, or work with that. Um, inspectors used to scare the crap out of the buyers with no matter what it was. Now, if the, the, the house needs a roof or there's a crack in the foundation, they're not gonna, you know, soft sell it. They'll be like, hey, that roof needs to be done. It's at the end of its life its expectancy. You should have that crack checked. You should do the radon test. You should do whatever. Yeah. But I see that the things that they used to be really big about, they're really just more con consult around it. Like, an old electrical panel or something, or outlets that don't have the um, the uh, the ground or something, or uh, I don't know, just things like that. Used to be, I remember those things used to be really big, and now they just consult around it. So, Lou, how you know how are you coaching you know your realtors in your office now um, to not only you know do well during this time, but in a year from now, how are they you know going to continue to uh, you know to produce continuously you know after. Uh, the you know pandemic stuff. Well, it's funny. So a few things. So I love when agents have closing. Don't get me wrong, and I'm happy for them when they come with their first commission check, or their second or their third. I'm very happy for closings. But I, my mind has always been wired that closings were yesterday's business. So if a closing happened today, that transact that no like and touch factor happened about 90 days before that, right? Yeah. So I'm always teaching my agents like, okay, great, you're the closing, but what's in your pipeline? So I'm always gearing them up to stop worrying about closings or stop talking about, I'm sorry, not worrying about, stop talking about your closings and getting high on your horse by your closing. But again, I'm happy because they have income, they feel it, it's in their pocket, I, I love that. But I always get them to focus on their pipeline. All, my whole team, my offices, my leadership, we're all focused on pipeline. So whether it's a pandemic or normal times, it's all about what's in your pipeline. And just like in your business, if you had an inspection thing and got paid, but you turned around and you had no more inspections, like what's in your pipeline? How many inspections do you have lined up for, for the next 30, 60, 90 days? So it's always about, um, contract. we call it contracts written um, or listings taken. Listings taken, contracts written. So that's what I coach around, no matter what time of year it is. But what I do see now is like I would see, um, before the pandemic, I had an agent that had their normal trajectory was you know, uh, 12 contracts written in a year, you're seeing that person do, you know, 35. And then they think that, oh my God, I'm so much better at what I think they think they're better, but it's just happenstance of the market. They got to realize that if they didn't change anything that they were, if they didn't change their activities on a daily basis from what they were doing that created that 35 and it was just coming in because they're an order taker, it's going to go back to what it was before or even less because they're going to get too comfortable with that process. But if they said to me, Lou, hey, I created that 35 transactions by me 
making cold calls, turning over stones, knocking doors, mailings, lead gen. And they proved to me that they had a great lead gen plan in place yeah. for that time. Then I'm like, okay, that's a cool person. I want to help them become better. But if it was just happens to enter the market, you know, we don't, we're not really hooking up. So that, and that's what the deal academy is about, creating that value for the agents to help them. Cause the best thing about being in real estate is your own boss. The worst thing about being in real estate is your own boss. So you can run and hide on a daily basis in the real estate industry. You could like, I, I tell people like, I get more done in the morning between five and nine than most people get done between nine and five. <laughs> and it's just the way I've always been wired. Yeah. But most agents, like when I leave the house in the morning or when my agents leave the house in the morning, and they turn around and kiss their dog and kids whenever goodbye, their family is expecting they're going out doing the best uh, best thing possible for their family that day to create the income or whatever they need. Um, whether it's a husband, wife, whatever, leaving the, and they come home at night, they believe you went out and you were doing what you were supposed to do for the family. If you're not lead generating and you're, and you're just playing on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok and wow, yeah. just jerking around, that's what 80% of the agents do. So we teach them that you know, if you focus and lead gen on a daily basis for three hours max, yeah, you could pretty much tail the rest of your day to showing this, this, and that. So these are things that we teach. So regards to the pandemic, it was good for the income, definitely helped us out. But now we're coaching the agents to like, okay, what's life look like after that? And we have a lot of stuff in place for them. Yeah, and so, you know, if someone said, hey, you know, Lou, you know, inventory is low, you know what I mean? How do I get stuff in my pipeline now? I mean, I, I certainly a, a you know unique situation, but how would you coach them through gaining prospects with low inventory? So there's two sides to the coin. There's, there's obviously there's buys and sells. That's the only two ways to do real estate. Now there's also like you know commercial stuff, retail, all that. But we're not even talking about that. Um, one, um, find new construction. See if you can hook up with someone with, that does new construction, which is not really a lot in our market area, but new construction is always an avenue because it's creating more inventory for the local market. Yeah. Um, but really going out and seeking out motivated sellers. So there are motivated sellers out there that you just have to turn up stones and find. Wow. Um, and then try to find that inventory for your buyer. So what I try to teach our agents to do is like, instead of just waiting for, the, for something to pop up on the MLS, which most agents do because it's the path, path of least resistance. I teach our agents like to find out what your buyer's needs are. Find out the school district they want to be in. Find out what um, what you know town, school district, size of house. Like get their like their needs and wants analysis done, and then actually get in the car with them and find the areas and neighborhoods they want to live in. So let's just say they want to live on one, two. They want to live on the main street. Okay, great. Drive down main street with your buyers. Or you don't actually have to get in the car with them. Have them drive down Main Street while you're out prospecting for them. And then have them pick out the houses they want and just write down the addresses. And now you have no market competition. You find out the owner's name, go knock on the owner's door or call the owner and be like, hey, I have a hot buy. Now you're not lying. You're like, hey, I got this hot buyer right now. They're pre-approved, ready to go. They would love to buy your house. If you're thinking about selling now in your future, can we talk right now? And we make more deals that way than the MLS. I mean, the MLS is, is good because it's easy but i have more agents that are out turning up stones and doing um, off-market deals we call them than they ever did before so um that's what we teach them is just go don't let the mls dictate your business go find it go find the buyers go find go find the sellers make the connection your job is to connect people and make deals happen you're brokering a transaction you're managing emotions on both sides and you're basically a psychiatrist at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> i think i am actually <laughs> I have a PhD in uh, real yeah. estate. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, cool. Well, look, Lou, we appreciate your time today, Pleasure. man. And, Thank you. And best of luck to you and your agents in this Thank office. You. And um, appreciate your time. Thank you. Take care.